Uh, hi, uh, my name is Mateusz Kuzak, and I will, uh, I will be presenting the work that we are doing in Elixir on uh, improving the, uh, the research software and the, the practices we're working on. Uh, but all the work that I'm going to present, it's work of many, many people uh, involved in that. I'm like one of the people who are contributing to the project. Uh, so keep it in mind, it's not my work, it's, it's a lot of fantastic people uh, contributing, and not only in the Elixir. Um, so Salva already gave an introduction to Elixir, so fortunately I don't have to do that. Uh, but I will only mention that, um, that the work that is done here, part of the work has been done in, com uh, so in collaboration between the training uh, platform and uh, tools platform. So we're combining like the things that are necessary in tools with the uh, expertise and skills in the training platform, people who know how to train people. Uh, and you'll learn later why uh, it is the case. Um, so the, the initiative uh, started a few years ago. Uh, the, the idea was to start a group of people who will look into how we can improve the quality of research software and introduce best practices in research software in Elixir. Uh, and the uh, Software Development Best Practices Working Group has been uh, initiated with the idea that if we, uh, from the start, encourage development of software in the open, so if everyone who starts developing software, they will do it in the open, on GitHub, uh, with everyone uh, being able to look at it, contribute to it, it will hopefully lead to better software in the end because there will be more people who can see, contribute, comment, and also there will be a little bit of pressure because you know that people are looking at it and you will uh, pay more attention what, uh, to your work. But then we realized, um, no, I'll get to that. But So first we started thinking about how do we, uh, like what kind of uh, best practices we want to encourage and also how do we measure that. Um, and we, we have developed, we have the first meeting at, uh, at Schiphol Airport in Amsterdam uh, three years ago, I think. Um, and we started working on the, on the metrics uh, to measure best practices in life science research software. Uh, but then we f also thought like 10 things is a lot. So let's start with a, a little more like less intimidating things. So we developed four simple recommendations for researchers. So it's usually it's not like advanced, uh, very skilled RSCs or research software engineers. It's the researchers who are developing software and we want to help them to develop it better uh, with in incorporating good practices. Uh, but the programming itself, it's like they, they're usually people who learned programming themselves. So they're very intimidating by other people looking at their code. So we thought about like, and they also they don't know what it takes, like what are the consequences of developing software in the open, uh, consequences that people are looking at it, uh, and uh, people may want to contribute. So we developed those four simple recommendations. I will uh, explain them in more detail. Um, but so the first thing that we realized, people are very much afraid of making it open source because the other people will start looking at their code. They will uh, maybe comment on their code. Maybe they won't like their code. Uh, maybe uh, if the researchers, they're often afraid that they're going to get scooped. Yes, yeah? so someone the, will take their idea and do something with it and publish it before they manage to publish it. Uh, what if people want to have, get support and you don't have resources to, get, to give support for, for software? Yeah? So um, along with the four recommendations, we actually compiled the long list of things, uh, long list of fears of open sourcing research software, and then how do we address those, uh, those fears? So how, yeah, how do we help research to, to researchers to overcome it? Uh, so we have, uh, we have developed those four recommendations. We have published them. You can find the recommendations with more explanation on the website. There's URL at the top, uh, but I will quick, 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 quickly walk through them. Uh, so first of all, make the code uh, open from day one. And th there's a reason why it's from day one. And I think this is um, a bit controversial. So some people say, uh, it's too much overhead, like if you don't even know what's going to happen with the code. But actually, if you're talking about the fears of open sourcing, if you're putting on GitHub empty readme file, there are no fears, yeah? There's nothing that people can comment. They, they, there's nothing to not like about it. It's an empty readme file. And then you will slowly add things, and you see that like the word is still out there. It, nothing's changed. Like, 
no one is attacking you, the, the, you can continue and you, you keep adding and you actually see that it's not that scary and it, you can get used to it, yeah? So I think this is a good way to start doing it with the empty file. Uh, and then uh, make it discoverable because if you have software that no one can find, uh, that's not very useful. I mean, it's still useful for you, but so we uh, want people to deposit the software some, in some uh, place that it can be found. Uh, but of course you need a license because no one can use your software if there is no license. And this is also something that we've learned that not, a lot of people don't know about. And they think that if they put the code on GitHub, people can use it even there is no license. Uh, so we, we also address that. Uh, we also want to, like, this is project in the open, so you also have to take care of how do you want to interact with the community and how people can, like, from the community can contact you, how they can give the feedback, so you, can, you, ha you should describe that. And that's usually what people are not aware of the, uh, because they're used to developing tools that never see the light of the day. Uh, the, so no one is going to actually try to interact with them. Yeah? Um, so in summary, we think that like, improving or like, uh, applying those best practices will lead to better quality uh, of the software uh, and better sustainability in the long run. And in the end, we have better science. Yeah? So that's what we want in the end. Um, and then, we also want to incentivize uh, researchers to do it, to, apply, to, to implement those best practices. So we want to be able to measure those and somehow display. So we're also working together with, with Salva, with Open eBench. How do we measure those best practices that are applied to the software and like, like display them prominently on, on the websites? Um, that's for two reasons. So one is to give credit to the researchers that they, they put effort in it and then that is visible, but also for others to see how good the software is. What are the, like, is there documentation? Is there a license? Uh, these kind of things. Um, so then, then we realized, like, we have those, those uh, guidelines, but actually no one will do it, probably, because people don't know how to do it. So we have teamed up with the training platform uh, and with the carpentries, and we have developed the lessons to teach around those four recommendations. Uh, so we did a series of online and face-to-face -face events, uh, and we, uh, I think, along the year, within the year, we have developed the lessons. Uh, so we found out that it's very useful to have some face-to-face -face sprints uh, with like uh, really uh, doing a lot of work uh, together, but also we need those intermediate uh, online uh, uh, sprints uh, to polish the lessons. Uh, and we have released the lesson beginning this year sometime. Uh, I will show the link. Yeah, so this is the link to the lesson. We're using the Carpentries templates. We don't want to reinvent anything, so we're reusing as much as possible. We're using the Carpentries lesson template and workshop templates. Uh, you can find the lesson there if you find any problems. The lesson is developed like software, so you can, if you find some issues, you can make issue or you can make a pull request, even better, because then we can just review it and in integrate it in the lesson. We can also make comments. Uh, so these are people uh, like in the core team that have been developed the lesson. Uh, but as I said, there were m many, many more people who contributed, uh, and we were very thankful for that. Um, and after after this, we uh, yeah we continue working. How do we how can we improve? And of course, fair is now very uh, popular acronym uh, <laughs> that you can hear everywhere. So we're thinking about how fair applies to research software, and you heard from Salva a little bit about it. Uh, we joined the Library Carpentry Global Sprint to work on top 10 things that you can do to improve the fairness of the software. So if you're interested in it, uh, so we, we published it together with the other uh, library carpentry resources, which are like you can learn uh, top 10 things for oceanography data, uh, but we did for research software. Uh, you can, if you follow the QR code, you go to the, the whole uh, library carpentry top 10 things, but you can also see our poster uh, at the post poster session, uh, P14, free. Um, and you can also download the poster from the website. Uh, so what's next? We are we actually now uh, have the, the working group in, the, in Elixir to uh, continue with this work, but more in uh, implementation in Elixir. Uh, so, so far we've published those recommendations and metrics. Uh, we, uh, we have the training materials. We actually started teaching the workshops. We had uh, two first workshops, uh, one in hand uh, and one in Athens last week. Uh, and we're also taking this opportunity, so we actually take a little bit more time. We teach the workshop, and then we have some time to get feedback from the people who are participating on what worked, what didn't work in the workshop, and we're trying to improve the lessons. 
Uh, and the next step we want to, uh, as I said, so we, uh, we, we need to focus on the measuring the quality. Uh, so in the end, we want to improve the quality, reuse, and sustainability. Well, okay. Um, and so we, we need the guidelines. Uh, we already started the training and promotion. I think we need more guidelines uh, once we get also more content and more, uh, for example, how to make software fair, more detailed uh, descriptions. Uh, we're working on software management plans, so we want to make it easier for people to think about how they're going to manage software in the projects, and also tell the managers what they should be looking at in order to evaluate how well the software is managed in the project. Yeah? And, yeah, and we, go, we want to measure, recognize, and visualize those things. If you want to help us, we're, we want to work uh, in the upcoming sprint, so that tomorrow and day after tomorrow, uh, on software citations, how we can improve software citations, how can we incentivize that, how can we facilitate that, and we'll be also continuing this work at the eLife uh, Innovation Sprint. And I think that's it, yeah. What questions do you have?